people buy this big old mansion that they thought they would love and after a couple of months of living in that mansion they'll find somebody else's mansion that's nicer and say man I don't have that and there's a void in their heart mm -hmm. it's never going to be fulfilled your greed your lust it's never going to be fulfilled faith real faith true faith offer something that nothing else can offer it can fill your heart with contentment that's what we're offering so you have to fight your desires you have to for a moment maybe for a day for a week we ask you just to put your desires aside just put them aside for a little while and just deeply reflect on the truth reflect on your real purpose in life and see if that can push you in a different direction there were people like much like you that were in a life of of really entertaining themselves drowning themselves in, in, in all of their seductions and Allah gifted them with just a, resp a possibility or just a few moments of taking a seat back pulling themselves out of that cycle and thinking about it for a moment and they found the truth and they are now they are at more peace now than they were ever before why is it do you think that a young man a young Muslim man a young Muslim woman you know good looking healthy smart you know making good money etc etc is not going to go to the club it has all the power to uh -huh. what's stopping him what is so powerful that it's it's not tempting him like it tempts you why is it that he's able to fight that he's got something so powerful that nobody else can see and we want to share that treasure with you we want to share that, that's yeah. that's what we want you to experience uh, you know a lot of us we uh, some of us are just coming over from what we call jahiliya coming over from the days of ignorance some people you know they can relate to this and they're laughing at it now because they have that true peace and that contentment they don't have to go to the club they don't have to go chasing the material world but why do you think it is that someone you know, we've seen this, you know, the woman, she, because the next point she mentions is, you know, women in your religion, uh, they got a cover from head to toe. But you'll see women just fighting so hard. It's like freezing outside and she's got, you know, the, the skirt coming up and you're like, man, ain't you cold? She's just fighting, but now the cold weather will still have to have her put on some kind of, some clothes. Yeah. Or she'll have to give out... You know, the number, the guys are out there, you know what their agenda is. They, yeah. they want to satisfy their desires. The woman, she feels insecure if she's not giving, at least if her phone's not blowing up and 20 guys are calling her a date. She's got to have this, this uh, feeding to her ego and it becomes like a game. It yeah. becomes like, you know, this life we're just playing with each other. And it's really uh, what a lot of times uh, our sisters don't realize in humanity is that they're actually being used. They think they're dressing how they want you don't want that you just want you're just uh, appealing to the desires of men that's what they want it's not what you want they want it more than you do they want you to dress half naked you know and so the the, the thing about hijab and covering and modesty and things like that first and foremost it's a commandment in Islam well, uh, the Muslim woman covers she she covers herself in a certain way why because she is convinced this is a commandment a prescription from her Lord and what her Lord says is better for her in her fulfilling her purpose. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the essential point of this issue. But just to speak about clothing a little bit, you know there are, uh, in Islam we say that there are three purposes of uh, clothing. There are three purposes of clothing. Uh, one purpose of clothing is protecting yourself from the elements of the weather, uh -huh. like you just mentioned. Another purpose of clothing is beautification. Another purpose of clothing is modesty. There are three purposes. Protection, beautification and modesty but the priority is different in Islam the priority first is what modesty that's the first priority you have to have decency you have to have you know uh, you shouldn't be uh, uh, objectified you know so that's the first purpose the second purpose in, uh, of clothing in Islam of course is protection from the weather and and together with beautification there's nothing wrong with wearing nice, clo nice clothes so long as you are guarding your modesty right what happens in a lot of non-Muslim culture is that a lot of times people don't care about modesty at all. They don't even care sometimes about protecting themselves from the weather, like you said. Yeah. What are they concerned about? What they think is beautification. Yeah. That's what they're concerned she's got, about. She don't want the whistle, but she's got to have it. Yeah. So, so this is the... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a change of shift because, you know, and we say modesty, which is a kind, it's, a, it's an aspect of humility. And why does a Muslim have to have humility? Because they've acknowledged that they're not in charge of their life, there's a higher power. Yeah. So even in their, their speech, even in their daily life, in how they spend their time, 
in their clothing. Clothing is just one, one manifestation of humility, but we argue that humility has to be something that's a part of your speech, your demeanor, your mannerisms, the way you speak to people, the way you deal with your family, the way you deal with your Lord. There has to be humility all around. And one of those aspects is humility in clothing. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, we're almost out of time. Just a few more points. We uh, will hope that you will continue on because this program is very short. And we just want to give you a good taste and clear some of this junk that's out there. That the the point about these uh, the woman, it seems like the, the Muslim women who do cover up, they make a conscious decision. Even people that might come from abroad, they come over here. Yeah. This is their opportunity to take off the hijab. They wear it. They yeah. still they 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 they're not slaves to their desires. They're slaves to their creator. And sure. They, they feel a great commitment to do this. And you have many Americans, women who are taking a. a conscious decision and putting this on their own. They're not forced Absolutely. to do this. This Absolutely. is an amazing thing. Now, the other point that uh, the person uh, brought up is about the organized religion. And you hear this a lot where a person will be like, you know, that all religions are just man-made. And we, I would agree we shouldn't have to follow a man-made religion organized sure. by men. So how sure. can we clear up this misconception? I think that what's happened is, um, at least in Western society, there's been a lot of disappointment with certain religions because you could see clearly the logical contradictions in them, like right off the bat. You don't even have to go, go deep into finding the logical yeah. contradictions. You could see them right off the bat. So what's happened is that stigma has been... We've taken that, that paint and we've brushed all the religions with the same paint. Yeah. And we've said basically, oh, this one's man, uh, religion one is man-made, religion two is man-made, therefore all the others must be man-made too. So we actually stop looking into religion altogether, right? What we're arguing is that's not a fair assessment. You know, just like you don't judge, you know, you don't meet two people from a certain race and then pass judgment on the entire race. You don't meet two people of that gender and then pass judgment of the entire gender. Same, same thing with religion. You come across a certain religion and you're not satisfied with it. You didn't find it convincing. That's not fair for you to just brush off all other religions and say, oh, they're all man-made. That's actually an oversimplification and a, an intellectual laziness on your part. You're actually just justifying to yourself that, yeah, I was kind of thinking about submitting to my creator. I didn't find something, you know, satisfying. Yeah. So I'm just going to go back to my old distractions, uh -huh. right? It's kind of like, I'll tell you, you you're only going to dig, you know, uh, the analogy, you're only going to dig into something and you're going to only spend effort and time in something that you think is worth it. Like if I asked you to dig a, a hole into the ground for $5 and, and dig 10 feet half the day, you won't do it. But if I say dig 10 feet and I'll give you 20,000, you'll start shoveling. Yeah. So you only put time and effort into something that you think is worth it. If you think the truth and finding the purpose in your life is worth it, you'll dig and not find, then dig again and not find, and dig again and not find until you find. Right? You're going to keep on digging. But this, this attitude of, oh, generally, just without even any inquiry, without even caring to look at the matter, you just say, oh, you know, I don't have to look into it. I already know that there's nothing, it's all man-made, we're all going to go to heaven. Well, the idea of heaven comes from religion anyway, so where did you get that idea? <laughs> right? Yeah. You're, you're jumping the gun and you're, it's actually showing your intellectual laziness, your emotional laziness. And perhaps the reason is, maybe you don't want to find the truth. Maybe in, deep inside you, you're scared that if you find the truth, it's going to ask you to change yourself. And if you don't want to change yourself, Allah says in the Quran, بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ أَمَامَهِ يَسْأَلُوا أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Very beautiful. He says, no, the human being, he wants to continue to disobey and explode in his disobedience that is in front of him right away. He wants to stay in that rut. Yeah. And then, that's what leads him to ask, oh, when is the judgment day coming anyway? When is the resurrection coming? It's not going to happen. We're all going to go to heaven. Look at what Allah said and look at what you're saying. It's like he drew a picture of what you're saying. Subhanallah. You know what, when I, when I study Qur'an and then I, I look at the kinds of questions people ask, it's incredible. Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. You're not the first person to ask this question. There have been hundreds of thousands of people before, millions if not, that have asked the same question of their Lord, of their purpose in life. And there are people who found that answer and were sincere to themselves. And there were people who passed by these responses and said, no, my desires, my temptations, my seductions are just too powerful for me. I'm going to stay in this mess. You have to decide if you're stronger than your desires. And I want to create an urgency with this person. I'm, I know they're sincere in the many uh, thousands that are watching that death is a reality. It's not something that this 
should be put off searching for the truth. Thousands of people just in America die every day. I'm told that close to 150,000 die globally. So death can reach us at any time. And this Absolutely. is a fact. And we should kind of get on the ball about finding what the true purpose of our life is. Absolutely. You know, أينما كنتم يدرككم الموت ولو كنتم في بروج مشيدة. Allah says, wherever you may be, death will come to you. Even if you are in fortified camps, you're in the best security system. Death does not need to knock on your door. It will come right to you. You could be in your beds. You could be in your sleep. You could be driving to work. You could be perfectly healthy one day and a heart attack and die the next. We say it was sudden cause, sudden death, right? Cause of death unknown. This happens too. Death is not in your hands. It is the hands of your Creator. And because there's no timeline, you think you make a 40-year plan, you may not even have three hours left on this earth. I don't know how much time I have left. You don't know how much time you have left. Yeah. So you, we have to have a sense of urgency to finding our purpose. Because once that, that, that clock stops ticking and we leave this earth, then like one of the companions of the Prophet said, Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, people are sleeping. It's beautiful. He said, people are sleeping and when they die is when they wake up. That's when their eyes open. And nasu niyam, people are asleep. So we, we ask that you wake up before you go into the grave. Where everybody else thinks you've been put to sleep, the reality will be you've actually been woken up at that point. And you don't, we, don't want, we don't wish that upon you. We don't wish that you wake up at that point. We wish upon you that you wake up now. That you look at, think about your purpose and reality now. Inshallah. Yeah, and it's not fair now that you expect the Creator or you go to your boss and he told you and he gave you a list of responsibility. You neglected it, now you want to get paid at the end. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. Okay, thank you for being with us. You're quite welcome. welcome. We welcome. hope to have you back again, inshallah. God inshallah. Look and forward thank to you. It. I really hope that you're sincere, that you're honest, and I'm sure that you am. I'm, I'm sure that you want to know the truth, and I hope that this somewhat will stimulate you to continue on in your journey. Do the most important thing. Ask the one who created this universe and everything in it. Take the first step. Don't fight the guidance. Ask Him to guide you. The one who created you and took care of you and is still taking care of you, ask Him for the guidance. And He created you. I mean, one of the beautiful things is that He's the most loving and the most merciful and it'd be unfair that He wouldn't guide you, but it's unfair to yourself if you don't even ask Him to give you the guidance. So ask Him to guide you. Take that first step, that first crucial step to wanting to know the truth and then when the truth comes, be on it. It's very simple. And Islam is calling you to something that's in your very nature. To be a slave, to be one who surrenders and submits to just God alone and not His creation. And if you can dig this, this simple thing, then everything else will fall in place. It's a very beautiful way of life. And we hope that you got the benefit from this show. And we look forward to having you again, God willing, inshallah, on the Deen Show. Until next time, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم Come and see what everyone's talking about Who? If you find one contradiction it can't be from God But the rational idea, the rational explanation is you do your best Give up worshiping God is one I will never give up spreading this message I hope that you take that necessary step You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. The, the reality of life usually doesn't sink in until tragedy comes. You get a few bad people, the media grabs a hold of that and spends it the way they want to. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is attended our faith to...
It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask a lot to forgive me. Oh, Allah, you see. Oh, Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your sinful slave. You're my loving Lord. I'm the one who runs away. Oh, Allah, guide me.